Start by opening up a new part in SolidWorks. We'll work in inches for this example. We're going to follow along on the chapter two example. And remember to look at our tree on the left hand side as we develop our part. We're just going to start with a simple sketch. And to make sure that you're in the right units, you can always check your unit system at the bottom right. For this part, if we click Edit Document Units, we're going to change our length decimals to have three, and we'll hit OK. In the Sketch menu, click Sketch and select the front plane. We're now drawing, looking at the X and Y axis. We're going to draw our rough shape and we'll start by creating an L. Let SolidWorks automate some of those constraints. This is a vertical, this is a horizontal. See the dashed lines? That way we know we're working in 90 degree uh, increments. Make sure that your drawing has a completely closed shape, and you should be able to see all of the green lines that show that these are vertical or horizontal. At this point, we're going to smart dimension our part. We only have four dimensions to fully constrain this, so we'll click this line, drag it out, and click again. This dimension is 2.5. We'll click this bottom line, drag it out, and click again. This dimension is also 2.5. These two smaller sections are going to be 0.75. And that gives us our final geometry for this part. The last thing that we need to do, since it's not fully constrained, is press Escape to get out of the Dimension tool. Grab our corner and bring it right to the origin. If you notice, all of the lines turn black, and at the bottom right it says fully defined. Also in our property manager, we can see it's fully defined. We'll exit the sketch, and from here we can extrude. So go back to the features menu, and we'll use extruded boss base. My sketch was already selected, so it automated that. If yours is not, notice the sketch is added and you click extruded boss base, it'll ask you for a plane or an existing sketch and then just click one of the lines on your sketch. Here we can see it selected the whole profile. The distance of this part is going to be 2.5. Press enter and you can see that it's coming from this sketch plane as a blind and going out 2.5 inches. If you feel confident, press the check mark. Notice that in our feature manager, we have boss extrude. If we click that down a level, there's our sketch. SolidWorks is really good about throwing the dimensions in when you click a specific feature. We're going to create another sketch, and this sketch is going to fall on this face right here. So click sketch, click that top part, and then we need to rotate our view. There's a couple quick ways to do that. If you hit spacebar and click the top, that should pull your view right to where you want to go. We'll use those line tools again, and you can try to line this up as best as you can. But we're going to draw the L in this direction. Notice how that I'm pulling to that point to make sure that I get that line. If you don't, it makes a curve or tries to automate that arc. If you don't like it, you can click your line, hit the lead on the keyboard, and then click your line one more time. Grab that part, and now you know it's at 90 degrees. We'll use the smart dimension to grab this line, and we'll set the same dimensions as our previous drawing.
If your sketch overlaps, that's no problem. We're going to move this right now. So press escape to get out of your tool. If you can, try to grab that piece. We'll just slide it and make sure it locks with the edge. Make sure that that's all concentric with that point here. It's now black. It's fully defined. Let's exit sketch. And we can rotate our part just a little bit. If you'd like to fit it, you can click oops, fit to view. And then from here, we can rotate our part. We'll go back to our features menu, extrude, select that part. If you keep rotating your part, you'll realize that something is wrong. This part could never be manufactured. We need to flip this in the other direction. The easiest way to do that is to click reverse direction. We still want this at 2.5. We know that this dimension was 2.5. And we'd like to merge the result. We'd like this to be one complete body. We don't want this to be two separate things. So once you have all that selected, hit your green check and you can move forward. From here, we should be pretty close to our part. We have two more cuts to make. So let's go back to our sketch, click sketch, and we're gonna draw on this face right here. Again, to flip your view, you could click the top of the Y here and then zoom in. Choose circle and draw a circle anywhere. We'll use our smart dimension to click the edge of the circle to get a diameter. The diameter of this hole is 0.75. We'll now put, position the hole properly on this face. To get it halfway between this edge, we'll click the center and this edge. And we know that it was 2.5, so we could type 2.5 over 2. And that should put it right in the middle. We'll set it 0.75 off of this wall, since that is what the drawing asked for. Once you have your circle, it should be fully defined. We'll hit check, exit sketch, and then we'll go to our features. When we rotate our part, if we select extruded boss base, it's going to want to make a physical feature. We actually want to cut a hole. So slide over to extruded cut. And we'll select through all. We know that this hole is always going to go through our part. That way we don't have to enter a dimension at all. Click the check and we've now created a hole. Our last operation is to create a chamfer in this corner. Let's create a sketch on this face. You can rotate your view either way. I'll use my line and make sure you don't snap to the midpoints. That will automate that constraint. So just find two areas that you can snap and get the edges of this part. We'll click that corner and then connect our profile so that we have a solid shape. We'll use our smart dimension and we really only need two dimensions. And we know that this is one and this is also one. We could do one and 45 and the rest would define the object as well. Once you have your chamfer cutaway, you can exit your sketch. We'll rotate the part so you can see it. Click Features, Extruded Cut, select that feature. If you notice, it's giving you a distance and it's cutting all the way into the space. If we ever wanted to adjust any parameters in this, this cut would always go this far. So if we shorten this length, it would come into that cut. We don't really want that to happen. So let's define where the cut ends by clicking up to surface. We're going to flip the part just a little bit and we'll click this surface. And that way it's only going between those two faces. We'll click check and we've now finalized our part.
Don't forget to save.